What's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the B-Link GT1 Mini Android TV box. Now I used to do a lot of these Android TV box reviews, but it got to the point where all the manufacturers were using the same chip and nothing new was released. So a few months ago, Amlogic released their all new S905X2 and that's what's in the B-Link GT Mini. I'm going to come right out and say it. If you buy one of these Android TV boxes with the S905X2, it's going to perform pretty much exactly the same as this thing's going to perform. I'm going to leave links in the description to Amazon to a few other boxes with the same chip that have a little bit lower price than the GT Mini. I also want to mention that if you're looking for a good or the best Android TV box, go with the Nvidia Shield Android TV. I understand some people can't afford it, so they have to go with these cheaper units. But if you're looking for something to do 4K video playback on your expensive 4K television, go with the Shield TV. You will not regret it. One thing that's going to be hard to come by with these boxes is the size of the GT Mini. This thing is super tiny. On the right hand side we have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. On the left hand side is the B-Link GT Mini. And as you can see, it is tiny. Around back we have a 3.5mm audio jack, gigabit ethernet, HDMI 2.0, and our power input. It's using a barrel jack with a 2 amp power supply. On the right hand side of the box we have a micro SD card slot, one USB 3.0 port, and one USB 2.0 port. The other two sides of the device are pretty clean except for the very front. There's a small pinhole where we can see the IR receiver that's built into the box itself. This is not an LED indicator, this is the IR receiver. I'm going to do a quick rundown of the specs on the GT Mini. For the CPU we have the Amlogic S905X2. This is still a quad core CPU but it's an A53 Cortex at 1.8 GHz. The GPU is the new Mali G31. Now it states that it's an MP2 but when I open up IDA64 it's showing that it's a single core GPU so I'm not 100% on this. But it does run at 850 MHz. This particular box contains 4GB of LPDDR4, and as for storage, they offer two models, 32GB or 64, but both have a micro SD card slot and USB 3.0. HDMI 2.0, one USB 3.0, one USB 2.0, Gigabit Ethernet, AC Wi-Fi so we can pick up that 5GHz network, Bluetooth 4.0, and a micro SD card slot good up to a 256 gigabyte card. As for the operating system, this one's running Android Oreo 8.1.0. I did do a quick tear down and inside of the upper casing there is an aluminum heatsink. Unfortunately the CPU shielding is not making contact with that. It's got a piece of foam on it so it's not really working as cooling. I guess they put it in here to add a little weight. So in this video I'm going to be testing the performance of the Amlogic S905X2. If you buy another box with the same chip from a different manufacturer you can expect the same performance here. They may have slower RAM, and might even have faster RAM, but overall, gaming, video playback, and emulation performance is going to be the same through all of these boxes. Alright, so here we are with the main interface. This is pretty much what you're going to get with any B-Link Android box. Now, making this video, I'm really taking a look at this chip, because all of these S905X2 boxes are going to perform about the same. Interface might be a little different, some of the features like storage and Wi-Fi might be a bit different, but overall, performance should be the same. We do have access to Google Play. Unfortunately, I couldn't install PUBG for some reason. It just wasn't listed. And you're not going to get the 4K apps like Netflix 4K on an Android box like this. So you got to keep that in mind. Like I mentioned at the beginning, if you're looking for an awesome 4K Android box, go with the Nvidia Shield Android TV. So this time around, Amlogic wasn't kidding about the CPU speed. We are at 1.8 gigahertz. That's the max this thing can do. Quad core, Cortex A53, and the GPU is that Mali G31. This is a single core GPU. It does OpenGL 3.2, but it doesn't do OpenGL 3.2 very well. And for the Android version, this particular box is running Android Oreo 8.1.0. I have seen some of these with Android Pie installed on Amazon. I'll leave some links in the description. Personally, I don't like the launcher that B-Link includes on their boxes. You could install a third-party launcher from the Google Play Store, but I kind of wanted to show you how it performed and looked all stock. Usually I start with benchmarks, but today we're going to start with video playback. First up is going to be Netflix. Like I mentioned, you're not going to get the 4K version of Netflix on here. You're going to get the standard phone version, which I believe is running at 720p. Still looks pretty decent. It's not the best in the world, but it does work. 
I also tested Hulu and Prime Video. Buffering's really good on these little boxes as long as your internet connection can keep up. Seven twenty and ten eighty p streaming is going to work fine on a box like this. You could get by with some four K streaming if we could get the apps that support it. And unfortunately, I guess this doesn't have the licenses for Netflix to do four K. So you're going to be stuck with that phone version. As for local media playback, again, seven twenty p ten eighty p is going to be great. And some 4K content is going to work fine, but don't expect this to play every 4K codec. I've had some issues with this and pretty much every other Android box except for the Nvidia Shield TV. All these manufacturers claim that these are 4K media players, and if you have a nice 4K television, fork out the extra cash to get something that's going to perform a little better than these. I did have issues with Big Buck Bunny, 4K, 60fps, but the 30fps version worked fine. And by the way, I'm using the built-in media player. Using Kodi is going to result in lower performance on even 4K 30fps videos. But as you can see, it's handling this 4K 30fps MP4 file just fine. I'm going to move over to some higher bitrate 4K videos. So here we have the Jellyfish test. 120 megabits per second, 4K UHD HEVC 10-bit MKV. It's smooth as can be, so it's really going to come down to the codec you're using for your video files. This is a pretty high bitrate video, but I do want to push it just a little bit more to see how it does. So I'm going to move over to a higher bitrate version of this same video here. Two hundred megabits per second, four K UHD HEVC ten bit MKV. Very nice handling this one without a hitch. Two hundred megabits per second. So, like I said, it's really going to come down to the video format you're using. Now it's time for a few benchmarks. I have run benchmarks in the past on the S912 and the Mi Box S that you can buy at Walmart with the S905. I'm going to put those in this video just so we can compare them. On the GT1 Mini, we scored a 59,883. On the older B-Link GT with the S912, we scored a 46,843. If we take a look at these scores down here, CPU, GPU, UX, and RAM, we can see that the new Mali G31 GPU in the S905 X2, which is in this box, is much more powerful than the old GPU that was in the S12. We're ahead of the S912 in all areas except for the memory, and this can vary depending on what manufacturer you buy your S905 X2 box from. So the S905 X2, at least in this benchmark here, this is all synthetic, is more powerful than the S912. Now the S912 had an 8-core CPU, the 905X2 only has a quad-core at 1.8 GHz. Next benchmark I ran was Geekbench. At the very top, this is the box we're working with here. Single core of 729, multi-core of 2285. The Mi Box S with the S905 scored a 589 for the single, multi-core 1661. And finally, the S912, single core 487, multi-core 2485. So we do have a higher single core score on the S905 X2 than the S905 and the S12, but the S12 beats it out in multi-core, mainly because it had four extra cores. I love seeing this higher single core score over here because it's going to help out in a lot of different applications. And if we take a look at it, the S912 with the eight cores really didn't beat out the S905 X2 by much. But moving over to a really GPU intensive benchmark, 3D Mark. The S912 actually edged ahead in both of these tests, Ice Storm Extreme and Slingshot. Not by much, and if we take a look at the whole scheme of things, these are very low scores in the Android world right now. But the S905 X2 actually impressed me with native Android games. This is Asphalt 9, it's running it really smooth, I don't notice any glitch in it at all, and I have really no way to accurately display the FPS for the S912 in this, but I can tell you that the S905 X2 seems to run better.
so if you want to play any of the Asphalt games on this tiny Android box, you shouldn't have any issues. Same thing with GTA San Andreas from the Google Play Store. I do get a little bit of glitch in here and there, and I've noticed this on a lot of devices lately. I just really think it comes down to the game itself. But it's going to handle these Rockstar games like Bully and the older GTA stuff just fine. And finally, for native Android gameplay, we have Minecraft. It is a bit glitchy. Now, I haven't messed around with any of the settings. You could turn the chunks down a little bit, but I wanted to see how it worked out of the box. I'm going to do a quick dynamite test and see how laggy it gets with that. As you can see, it's definitely slowed down a lot, and even after the fact with all this water on screen, it is still slow. I recommend turning the chunks down as low as they can go with something like this. Emulation on this box is pretty decent. This is Moopin64+, Plus, the N64 emulator from the Google Play Store. I'm running 007 Goldeneye here. I did test out Conker's Bad Fur Day, and it's really slow, but there are a lot of N64 games that are going to work fine on this thing. And if you're looking for some lower end emulation, this is going to handle it fine. PS1, SNES, Turbo Graphics, Super Graphics, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, all that stuff's going to work fine. You could even use RetroArch here, but I did want to test a little higher end. Don't expect this to run GameCube and Dreamcast, it's just really not going to do it. Some Dreamcast games are feasible, but in my testing, it wasn't that great of an experience. And finally, for the emulation side of things, I'm using PPSSPP, the standalone emulator from the Google Play Store. This is Burnout. We're running at a constant frame rate here. This is 2x resolution, and I do have some of the hacks on. But on a box like this, God of War, Midnight Club, and Killzone just aren't going to work. But there are tons of PSP games that are going to work fine on this. So overall, I was really hoping for a big jump in performance over the original S905 and the S912, but unfortunately, that's how it is with these small ARM chips. These manufacturers do incremental upgrades, that way they can make more money over time. If you've had your eye on the 905X2 and you're already running a 905 or a 912, it's really not worth the upgrade in my opinion. I know some people are going to definitely disagree with me, but I would save your money and wait for the S922 or just pony up and buy the NVIDIA Shield Android TV. It is the best Android TV on the market. They are a bit pricey, but it runs circles around all of these Amlogic chips. If you've just been getting into these Android boxes and you just want to spend around 60 bucks, go with the S905X2, most definitely. Over the 912, over the 905, it's going to be a performance increase, but like you just saw from the benchmarks, it's not much of a jump. You can pick up a 905X2 box on Amazon for around $60. I will leave links to a few of them in the description. This one here sits at around $99 on Amazon, but if you go to GearBest, you can get it for around $65. There are others that you can get prime shipping on, and they're going to perform just the same. Those links are down below. If you have any questions or you want to see something else running on the 905X2, just let me know in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.